Since its blockbuster IPO, Coupang has struggled to live up to the hype. It's down over 40% in less than a year and now carries a much less punchy market cap of $49 billion. When compared to some of its high-flying peers, e-commerce peers that is, such as Alibaba, JD, C Limited, Amazon, or even Mercado Libre, the price tag looks relatively small. Now, granted that a lot of its peers have better businesses at the moment, more established businesses in more established markets, and they have bigger opportunities to go after just because of their geography, Coupang still seems like a very good business with some very good tailwinds. And when you see the price drop so significantly from where its agreed IPO valuation is, I think it's always interesting to dive a little deeper. So you may or may not remember that we did a video on Coupang earlier in the year, analyzing its business and the potential tailwinds and headwinds that the company faces. We also did a hypothetical valuation for Coupang stock. And so as courtesy of our Patreon members, we're gonna be reanalyzing Coupang and seeing if the aggressive selling of the stock may have now created a good buying opportunity. After all, we have seen some, granted not loads, but some super investor interest in the most recent quarter that was quite compelling. David Abrams, a well-known and very successful value investor based out of Boston, bought Coupang in the last quarter, albeit it wasn't a huge bet. But what caught my eye even more was Stanley Druckenmiller increasing his position significantly and raising it to the biggest bet in his portfolio, making up around 12% currently. So there are some smart people who think Coupang has hit a very compelling price. This of course doesn't mean that they're right and we don't know the context or reasoning behind their purchase, but it's something that I like to look at. What smart investors think that this stock is a buy and could we potentially get in at the same price or a price that's even lower than they did? But coming away from that, we're gonna be doing our best to come up with our own independent objective view about whether Coupang is a good long-term play at today's price or not. And so first thing I wanted to look at was try to get an idea for why the stock has been dropping so significantly in the past six to nine months. And from what I could see, there wasn't any devastating news about the company that had come out. So we're gonna look here at some of its earnings misses. And I say earnings misses, this is a company obviously that isn't profitable yet. They're making quite a large loss, but a lot of the time Wall Street does buy and sell or put out buy and sell ratings based off of earnings misses, even when they're saying clearly they don't want to be profitable yet. So we can see that reported EPS, which is the actual earnings that the company has posted, have been consistently worse than what analysts or consensus analyst estimates have been. So we can see 16 cents versus 68 cents in the first quarter, 15 cents and 30 cents. And then we had the same thing in the last quarter as well. So we've had three bad quarters if you compare it to what Wall Street were expecting. This doesn't bother me too much, but it could be one of the reasons for the drop or one of the reasons for the bad outlook or bad sentiment on Coupang at the moment. Just switching over to the financials, and I just want to go in ticker before we look at the most recent quarter. We can see that this is a company that's been growing very quickly in the past two to three years, going from 4 billion in revenue in 2018 all the way to 17 billion as of the last trailing 12 months. Year over year growth rate in 2020 was very impressive at 90%. That was actually sped up from in 2019 when they only achieved 54%. Gross margins have actually been increasing year over year, which is another positive sign. 5% in 2018, 16% and now 17% in the last trailing 12 months. So we're starting to see you know, some sense of economies of scale, albeit the company is making a very big loss like we pointed out at the start of this video. Almost minus 1 billion US dollars in operating income as of the last trailing 12 months. That's versus minus 520 million in 2020. So not only are the revenues expanding, but the losses are expanding as well. Now getting into the most recent quarter, and this is probably another reason for the drop in the stock price since they reported earnings, we can see third quarter revenue growth of only 48%. Now I say only 48%, but this is a company, I think at the moment selling at two and a half times sales. I'm pretty sure I'm right there. Let's actually look at that. 2.6 times current revenues or trailing 12 months revenues, if you like. Forward multiple is two times sales. and. I know some people don't find it that useful to measure against sales, but what I like to do is if you take a underlying margin or a theoretical margin for a business, in Coupang's case, 
with the business they have, it's likely that in a mature state, they could achieve a low single digit earnings margin. So if we take that on their current revenues, say 2%, if we're being fair, that's only 340 million of earnings. So if we take their current market cap, 49 billion, that's saying that we have an earnings yield of 6 9%, which isn't very good considering that that's a theoretical margin. So we're actually doing them some favours there and saying that they can be profitable, which is obviously one of the, the big ifs with Coupang. And so what I'm trying to get at is, all right, a 0.7% earnings yield isn't great, but if you have 100% growth year over year in your revenues, then it's not bad. But what we've seen in the most recent quarter is growth slow. This is the slowest quarterly revenue growth I think they've put up since 2019. So maybe investors are looking at it going, well, there's some momentum shift back down. And now while we're on this topic, I do just want to address one of the concerns that I have or that everyone probably has with Coupang. They see the numbers and the numbers are great. Of course, we've looked at that 100% growth year over year, even now in one of their slowest quarters, 48% revenue growth year over year and gross profit growth of 62%. But they are very exclusive or they are very limited to South Korea. They're only really in the South Korean market. They're not in any other market as a dominant e-commerce player, although they have announced that they're, they're looking to enter maybe Singapore, Taiwan, and maybe some South American countries. But we have no real clarification on that yet, and they're gonna be competing with some very dominant players in those regions as well. So we focus on South Korea now, and you can see here, I've just got this statistic report up where they estimate the current e-commerce market in South Korea to be around 90 billion as of today. Now, revenue is expected to grow at five and a half percent for the next four to five years, resulting in a projected total addressable market of 112 billion by 2025. This is, of course, a lot larger than, than Coupang's revenue is at the moment. They're around 17 billion, which suggests they have close to, to 20 to 25% market share. And so what this means is that Coupang is already very dominant in this market, and the market is only expected to grow at around 5%. That's slower than the e-commerce rate globally. So some of these other companies, are global players, have bigger tailwinds than the likes of Coupang. So this is just something that we need to keep in mind. We'll come back to this when we jump into the valuation on the business, because it's gonna be an important metric that we're gonna to have to reference. But what I will add is that we have to keep in mind, Coupang is broadening its business beyond just pure e-commerce and online retail. They are making moves in groceries, food delivery, and video streaming. So these could all help to unlock a larger addressable market than we're seeing here just for uh, pure e-commerce essentially so that's just something to keep in mind if we're coming away from maybe the restrictions of a pure e-commerce tab now coming away from the negatives there are some major positives about coupang and they're mainly to do with its customer first business model and its best in class product and service especially in the region in which it operates they take customer satisfaction to a whole new level in terms of fulfillment and returns it even outcompetes the likes of Amazon in terms of its delivery time and returns process. For reference, due to the outstanding logistics network they've been able to build, 70% of its customers live within 10 minutes of their distribution centers, and that leads to a high percentage, higher than anyone else, of same-day deliveries and same-day return and refund from your doorstep. That is something that I believe is a winning formula. So on that point, Although Coupang has taken the time and effort to dominate its domestic market, and that's all it really has its claws into at the moment, there is the possibility that it could compete on a global stage. And on the topic of profitability and what I'm looking out for with Coupang and what I think investors should look out for in terms of improving the overall economics of the business, and that is the rise of the third-party merchant services revenues. We can see here it makes up just a little bit less than 10% of the total revenues over the past nine months. However, it is growing a lot quicker than the first party retail sales segment. So we can see here it's been over a double in revenue. That's around 120% revenue growth versus around 60% for the first party retail sales. This third party merchant services revenue includes things like commissions from third party sellers selling on Coupang's online platform, as well as advertising revenue and things like that. So it has better unit economics overall. It may not at the moment, but at scale it will have much better unit economics than the first party segment where they actually have to own inventory and things like that. 
We saw Amazon do a similar thing in their e-commerce business where they introduced a third-party marketplace and that revenue really boosted the overall margins of the e-commerce business. Another thing to look out for as well, which Coupang are actually introducing, is private label products, which is similar to what you have with Amazon, again, where they sell Amazon Essentials. We have Walmart do similar things as well, Tesco here in the UK, Tesco Essentials. Those products are sold, yes, on a first-party basis to the consumer, but they're also manufactured and owned at source from the company who is selling them. So it's a real direct-to-consumer product and proposition. And I think if they can boost those two things, similar to what we saw with Amazon, straight out of the Amazon playbook, I think we should see much better economics for the business's e-commerce side overall. And so as we start to think about valuation, you can see I've got my DCF here that we did on, on Coupang previously. I've got two different scenarios. We will cover what, what both of them have inside and what essentially makes up the valuation. But the way in which I wanted to do this was actually show you a forecast of, of where the numbers need to be in the next five years in order for Coupang to make sense as an investment right now, at least in terms of what my hurdle rate of return is, which is 15%. So if we wanna make a 15% hurdle rate of return on Coupang, this is essentially the numbers which we'll need to see. So that is a 40% compound annual growth rate up until 2025, which would make 64 billion in revenues. We would likely need an operating income in the low to mid single digits. So I've gone with 5% here and Remember, this is assuming quite a lot of improvement. There's no sign at the moment that they can achieve a 5% operating margin. We're saying that maybe if they can increase the third party sales on the platform, introduce private label products, as well as maybe venture into some more profitable industries, maybe like their video streaming business. But in any case, we're crediting them with an Amazon-like margin of, of say four to 5%. Now, the other thing that we would be assuming is around a 30 times exit multiple or, or 30 times earnings multiple as a valuation. That I'm not too concerned about because if they are really growing at a 40% CAGR, then the market would be silly not to put a 30 times multiple on those earnings just because of the, the peg ratio that that would give the company. That equals around one and a half times sales or EV sales as well, which again is similar to what Amazon's selling at at the moment, a little bit more than that actually. So that, that's all good for reference. And this would mean that the intrinsic value of Coupang today is around 26 to $27 per share, or while it's selling at $25 per share. And now, uh, after a drop, it's at a market cap of around 41 billion. So that would actually indicate that Coupang is undervalued today, just about undervalued based off of these forecasts. Now, in this alternative scenario, I'll just show you quickly, this is what I think is probably more likely to happen based off of the evidence that I've seen. Again, this is just my opinion. However, I've gone with this five-year forecast where momentum does start to slow down just because they are eating into that limited addressable market that they have on the e-commerce side of things. It gets us to around 50 billion in revenue, and I think the margin profile is more like 3%. So I've gone with a free cash flow and operating margin of 3%, and that gives us around 50% market share, e-commerce market share for Coupang, which I think is bullish. And then, depending on how you think the market is going to value such a company in five years' time, will then tell you whether the stock is undervalued or not. If we changed this multiple down to 30, like we've seen in the uh, previous valuation, then we get a fair value of only 17 to 18 dollars per share and a intrinsic value of 30 billion and some may say that 30 times earnings is going to be too low for a company like coupang has grown so quickly but do remember right just based off of the evidence that we've looked at this is going to be in year five or 2025 to 2026 they've eaten into 50 or 60 percent of their market assuming they haven't gone in heavy to some other industries and we're just thinking about the e-commerce side at the moment, they already have 50% market share. So I don't know, does the market look at that and think we're not gonna price this at 50 or 60 times earnings just because there isn't as long of a runway left and we're not gonna price it at two times sales, which by the way would make it fairly valued or just about at 26 times. But I like to be conservative. I'm probably gonna peg it down to a more market average, if you like, or closer to market average multiple just because I do like to account for some multiple contraction just to give me some element of safety. And unfortunately, that shows Coupang as being somewhat 
overvalued based off of my estimates. So you've got two scenarios here, but the long and short of it is really how quickly is it going to grow and what dollar figure of revenue will it reach by 2025, 2026? And what is the margin profile of the business in five to six years? That I think is the hardest question to ask, but you have to make some sort of judgment on it. And really that will determine whether you think the company is undervalued today or not. I personally won't be buying Coupang, even though it has dropped quite significantly. It does seem like a, a decent enough risk reward. It's it's just the predictability isn't there for me. And I think there may be better opportunities out there to put my money at the moment. So let me know in the comments what you think of Coupang and what you think of this valuation. I will leave a link to the Patreon in the description and this will have a copy of the DCF model you're looking at here, my Coupang valuation models, along with many other valuations as well. You'll also get access to exclusive analysis and a Discord community. So go and check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel. Other than that, if you could leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and I will see you all in the next one. As always, good luck with your investments.